Hello, this is tutorial number seven from Python for Biologists Absolute Beginner Course. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use conditions, loops, and libraries in functions. I'm going to go through several steps in order to prepare you to learn the basics of generating a proper GC content calculator function. This kind of function that I'm going to teach you how to write will tackle several problems related to nucleotides that are unknown, like ends in your DNA sequence. Sometimes you sequence a DNA and your generated sequence contains ends instead of A, T, C or G. But before generating or writing down the function properly, you have to learn certain basics. As you know, in the previous tutorials, I showed you how to parse DNA sequences. So I'm not going to go through this basic thing. What you've got to do is to use this bit of the code to parse DNA sequence. I'm going to use HCV poll sequence in a file, a FASTA file, and this is how you parse it. This is very easy. The second step is to try to find stop codons, start codons, or certain locations within your DNA. This is an important practice for you to start using conditional statements in your functions in order to do something. Let's try to find a stop codon in DNA sequence. The DNA sequence has been put into a variable called DNA, which is here. This is the name of the variable that I'm going to use. So you could say if TAA in DNA, if this is true, this is how you write the condition, then do something. You can print out stop codon is found. If it's found, it tells you that it is found. That doesn't tell you much. Where is the location? So you could say A is equal to DNA.find the first instance of the TAA and print A, it's at nucleotide number 120. You can also print out that nucleotide region. You could say DNA location A, then A plus 3. From nucleotide number 120 to 123 is the TAA. This is what we've expected. TAA starting from base number 120 and we expect this to be a stop codon if it's the proper open reading frame. This is just a practice. There is more to it. If the condition is met here, you do these steps. If not, how you write if not? You write down else print not found since it's found, the condition is already met, the result of the else statement is not shown. However, if you write D in it, it will show you not found because the DNA sequence does not contain D. So this is the basics of using if statements for biological purposes or bioinformatics purposes, the easy way. There is something called loop, and there are two types of loops. One of them is called for loop and the other is called while loop, how to use those to generate something like a reverse DNA sequence. Let's say my DNA is equal to DNA from 0 to 123 to the first occurrence of the stop codon, and we want to show this one as well as its reverse. So print my DNA. This is the DNA sequence, and we want to reverse this. How to do so? You say for i in my DNA, if i is equal to a, do something, print, you print out something. Here we print out t and we say end is equal to empty string. You can copy this several times, but change it to elif. Lf, it's equal to t, change it to a. So what this does is it searches the DNA sequence 
and for every occurrence of A it changes it to T and for every occurrence of T it changes it to A. Do the same for G and C. Now we can run this and show you the output but before that you Let's discriminate it. Below is the reverse of your DNA sequence. Okay. Now it shows us this is the DNA sequence, and this one is the reverse of the DNA sequence using for loops and if statements. Step four is how to convert DNA sequence to a list. This is also quite important. There are several methods of doing so. I wrote three methods for you. You can use any one of those methods to convert your DNA sequence to a list. And in the next coming tutorial, I'm going to use this in order to make my function quite useful. So here I'm going to use the third method, which is this method here, in order to convert my DNA sequence from a string into a list. So how to do so? Let's have a variable called x. It's equal to i.split. We use a split method for i in DNA or for i in my DNA then show X this is the DNA sequence that has been changed to a list how can I change this one back from a list to a string it's another technique so I'm going to show you this technique as well but first let's print this out in a different way this is our list generated from the string and it's called x how to convert the list back to a string this is also important there are several methods for this one also we have x that contains the list and you can actually say my dna equals dna from 0 to 123 dot split well this makes it a variable that contains list DNA sequence now to change this you could say my DNA to be changed change the variable this is equal to then open close quotation dot join the name of the variable that you want to change and then show it so my DNA was actually a list my DNA 1 is now a string you can also show my DNA this one is the list and this one was the string being generated from the list Finally, how to generate random nucleotide picker. This is quite important. Sometimes you need to have a list that contains DNA and pick from that one randomly to generate a population of nucleotide. And from that population of nucleotides, you choose nucleotides randomly in order to create a bell curved, normally distributed sample. You have to import a library called random and then use the random there is a function in random called choice and it's quite easy to do so say DNA sample equals to adenine or thiamine guanine or cytosine it's a picker equals the picker is a variable random dot choice 
Choice is the name of the function, a method that you can use in order to pick from DNA sample variable. Then you could say print out picker. Now it picked T. This time it picked G. So you can run it as many times as you please. Each time it randomly chooses one of those four. And in the next coming tutorial, I'm going to use all of these techniques in order to write a function that tackles the problem of having N nucleotides in your DNA sequence. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and thank you for joining me here.